many uh, oil and gas reservoirs in North America require some sort of stimulation to economically extract the resources uh, from the ground. Uh, hydraulic fracturing is one of the stimulation techniques that is used. It requires, um, uh, it's the process of creating uh, cracks uh, or opening existing cracks in the reservoir uh, to allow the hydrocarbons to flow to the wellbore. Uh, and it's a process that's been used in the industry uh, for about 60 years. Generally speaking, there will be two major companies represented during a hydraulic fracturing operation the operator and the service company. In this circumstance, Petrobacan is the operator of this particular well. They represent all of the title holders of the minimal rights of the land being drilled and fractured. Calfrac is the service company being used. They are contractors that have been hired by Petrobacan to do what they do best. The day begins with the morning meeting, where attendance is mandatory for anyone and everyone who will be working on site that day. The meeting is run by the well site supervisor. In this case, the supervisor will be someone from Petrobacan. The well site supervisor is in charge of the whole site. He or she represents the customer's interest and ensures everything runs smoothly and according to plan throughout the day. The fracturing supervisor is someone from Calfrac. He or she works side by side with the well site supervisor throughout the day and is in charge of the fracturing operation as a whole and accountable to the customer. Roll call is done and the roster is signed to ensure everyone is there and accounted for. Once the meeting is over, the team is ready to get started. One of the most important aspects to any hydraulic fracturing operation is water. Each water tank that is kept on this particular site has 64 cubic meters of capacity, usually filled to approximately 58 to 60 cubic meters to prevent spills. Each tank, therefore, is said to have a working capacity of 60 cubic meters. The Poseidon is used for freshwater storage only. It is a cost-efficient way of reducing the number of tanks needed on site. The other tanks could be used for a variety of storage uses, such as fresh water, recycled or produced water, flowback fluid, etc. The tanks are connected to what is called the manifold. It is necessary for tanks to be connected to the manifold for the pipes to transfer fluid. Once a tank is connected to the manifold, it means the fluid inside is being used. So the chemicals that are used in frac operations are very unique and very specific for the operating company, that's the EMP company, and also to the contracted uh, frac company. Uh, they're also unique to the geology of the formation that is about to be fracked, in addition to the kind of job that is going to be done. Individual companies will have their own patented combination of these chemicals, but the combined concentrations are usually less than 1% of the total volume of the fluid propent mixture. Sand is another important ingredient when it comes to hydraulic fracturing and is the most commonly used propent. Propent is what holds the fracture open and allows the hydrocarbons in the rock to flow to the wellbore. Combining it with water and select chemicals will allow the water to carry the propent down the well and into the fracture. There is on-site sand storage, and it is transferred from storage to the blender in a variety of ways depending on the operation. Today it is being done by a conveyor belt. Sand is lifted into a holding container and is then transferred to the blender. So the blender, it's, uh, it's the heart of a frac operation. Um, as the name implies, the blender, it's, it's, uh, it's an equipment where all the ingredients required for a frac operation gets fed into, mixed properly, at low pressure. The blender is carefully monitored by a professional who ensures that the chemicals and propent being used are mixed at the appropriate levels and concentrations. He or she monitors the chemical totes, cross-checking with visual confirmation and levels seen on the truck screens. The blender discharges fluid at a low pressure and connects to the plunger pumps through another manifold. The pumps boost the pressure by acting against the stresses that are already in the rock. Yeah, it's important to note that pressures exist in the form of pre-existing stresses in the earth. Mm -hmm. And it's those pre-existing stresses that create the pressures for pumps to work against. The fluid is being pushed through the high pressure lines into the formation, which is pushing back against the fluid. The fracture is being created as we watch these pumps move. 
Once the fracturing operation is in full swing, it is imperative that all data and information about what is happening is closely monitored. This is done inside the data van. Inside there are screens filled with charts and graphs that are giving a play-by-play -play of what's happening at any given time. Measurements are calculated by rates and concentration and all the measurements come together in the van. The data van operator and the rest of the workers get a more complete view of how the job is going. Some of the equipment that is on site today is unique to this particular tight oil fracturing operation, particularly the balls and the ball launcher. The balls are on site because this is a multi-stage fracturing operation and by that we mean that uh, more than one interval in the horizontal lateral will be stimulated throughout the course of the day and the balls will be used to isolate each interval to allow it to be fractured independently of all the others before moving on through the entire set. Before the balls are dropped into the launcher, they are measured, checked, double checked and triple checked to confirm their size. What is being made sure of is that the ball sizes and the order they are to be dropped matches the equipment setup that is already in the well. Balls are placed in a specific sequence, placed into the chambers and sealed tightly prior to any fluid injection. The control panel for the ball launcher has individual injection chambers and typically run from smallest to largest. Each lever is pulled at the exact time the ball is scheduled to be propelled into the well. The fracturing fluid follows and creates the fractures needed to stimulate that particular section of the horizontal leg of the well. Once a treatment is complete, another ball is launched, and so it goes until the planned well stimulation is complete. Once the stimulation treatment uh, is completed, the well site is cleaned up uh, and uh, some reclamation work is done uh, and, the, uh, and the location looks very, uh, very different. It's quieter uh, and uh, with minimal surface facilities and uh, the community can look forward to a, a, a long uh, period of time with uh, relatively quiet uh, production operations.